Welcome back to Ardna Crusha. Well, as we are all well aware, boating is a huge part of life on the Shannon. And when the power station was being developed, the ESB made a special lift for boats. So when Nationwide was offered the opportunity to join a group from Waterways Ireland, we sent Tom McSweeney along. And in his report, we see the sights and sounds that very few people experience from the deck of a boat being lifted 100 feet up and through the dam. Corbally in Limerick City isn't a place one would associate a lot with boating, but on this morning, as a small fleet of motor cruisers and barges sets off up the Shannon, a little history is being made on a particularly beautiful stretch of water. Aboard are inland waterways enthusiasts from Loch Ney and the River Ban in Northern Ireland, joining colleagues from the Loch Derg branch of the Inland Waterways Association. Well, this is a return visit. Last year, the Loch Derg branch of the Inland Waterways Association came north uh, to Northern Ireland. This is our opportunity to re uh, repair that and come south to see the Lower Shannon. To me, this is what the, embodies the whole idea of the Inland Waterways Association of Ireland, because this is a cooperation. New friendships, partnerships, relationships are being created. So all good at the present time in north-south relationships then? As far as the Inland Waterways Association concerned, they couldn't be better. We're all waterways enthusiasts. We have, we have the same passion for our waterways, but they're completely different. Um, and this is, it's a way of getting to know people. Uh, friendships develop and everything else. Um, but it's also an opportunity to show off what we have. The northern visitors are about to see one of the wonders of the waterways, Ardna Crusher, a fortress-like barrier on the Shannon, stark, dramatic as it towers above the river. Built in the 20s and amazingly engineered to such effect that is still to be marvelled at and in use in this technological age nearly 80 years later. Ardna Crusher was a barrier put across the river, generating electricity but engineered to provide a boat lift that hoists vessels a hundred feet from one level of the Shannon to the other. As Limerick City has again found its maritime heritage and developed its riverside facilities, Ardna Crusher is coming more into use. And for the northern visitors, it's impressive. No, I've never been to Ardna Crusher before and I must say I'm very impressed with what I've seen. It's something completely different to what we have to offer in Northern Ireland nearly 80 years ago and uh, unbelievable in the condition that it's in today and still operating and still providing electricity for the national grid. In the first lock, the keeper pumps water in slowly, carefully, to lift the boats. As they rise, people are amazed, fascinated at what they're seeing, something to be experienced only on a boat. I'm fascinated, one uh, lift of 60 feet and the other of 40 feet. Uh, it's quite very, very interesting and certainly very educating for us from the north. Ardna Crusher is one of the seven wonders of Ireland. I don't know what the other six are, but it's def this is definitely something that people should see. Looking down from high up on the lock gates, the boats are dwarfed in size as lifting begins in the second lock to complete the hoisting of the vessels a hundred feet. Impressive and dramatic. Local people don't appreciate the amenity that they have on their doorstep. Uh, and the people of Limerick, I don't think, re really realise what has happened down there. And it will take a little bit of time before people realise what amenity they have. It's something to be very, very proud of. We're now trying to uh, encourage people to use the waterway more. 
um, and to develop a number of products around it, uh, developing in Limerick City and in the link to, to Loch Derg and beyond and the link into the estuary. So an event like this where the north and south boaters are getting together for the weekend, uh, we, you know, we're very keen to encourage those sort of events to expose the waterway to, to people and let them see how they could use it. Barge 68M emerges onto a new level of the Shannon, a boat to which its owner has devoted several years of his life restoring and conserving what was originally a vessel that carried Guinness, flour, beef and other general cargo when the waterways were major transport routes. It was built in 1936, um, so it's relatively, it's one of the younger of the Grand Canal Company barges. Um, a number of barges are around uh, around 100 years old, in fact some of them uh, over 150 years old. Um, this was a canal boat and it drew cargo primarily on the from Dublin to Limerick. It was a, it, it took five years, um, but that was just work that was done uh, during the winter and then we use it every summer. So, you know, we, 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 got, we got the use of it all the time. We're all waterways enthusiasts. We have, we have the same passion for our waterways, but they're completely different. I think it's something that's just in the soul, uh, a love of nature, a love of the environment, a love uh, of the waterways. Uh, waterways are a great leveller among people. Uh, certainly no class distinction uh, when you're out in a boat. Uh, everybody's to fend for themselves and everyone helps each other. There's great cooperation, great com camaraderie from one to another. And since the recording of that story three years ago, many other boatmen and women have made the journey through the locks and over the dam. Our next story comes from the north of the country. The Roman earth goddess Tellos has lent her name to a highly sophisticated geological survey being carried out along the border. The Tellus project is a huge piece of work involving air and soil sampling across thousands of kilometres of landscape. Mary Hart joined the survey team on location in County Leitrim. The low flying de Havilland to an otter has been causing quite a stir as it crisscrosses every kilometre of countryside from Malin Head down to Sligo and along the border to Dundalk. This specially equipped plane is operated by Canadian-based Sander Geophysics. They're world leaders in airborne geophysical mapping. And every day, weather permitting, the mission sets off from St. Angelo Airport in Enniskillen. Uh, we are flying at 185 feet, uh, which is uh, rather low. We fly a, a grid pattern back and forth on uh, mainly north-south uh, headings. Oh, it's just been fantastic flying. Um, everybody's been really uh, friendly from the ground. Uh, a lot of times when we're flying overhead, we get people waving at us and, uh, you know, rocking their arms back and forth. And we try to acknowledge them the, the best we can from the cockpit. We always wave back, but I'm not sure if they actually see us. On board is some of the most advanced scientific equipment available. The data collected will help scientists better understand what lies beneath our feet. On the, the nose, on the nose cone, there is a magnetometer, and this measures the variations in the Earth's magnetic field. And primarily, this is telling us the variations in the different types of rock, because different rocks are differently magnetized. On the pods, on the wings, we have coils of wire, and this produces an electromagnetic field. We can use this electromagnetic field to measure conductivity in the ground. And again, this can tell us about how the, the conductive nature of the rocks and also the soils and the waters. And housed inside the plane, we have two sodium iodine crystals, and these measure the natural radiation given off by rocks and soils. And primarily, we're, we're looking at sort of the variations of potassium, thorium, and uranium. Well, I suppose the main benefit is that we can collect a huge amount of data very quickly. In, in this project, we're surveying over 57,000 kilometres of data. And this, this is done along a series of predetermined flight, flight lines. It would take years to do, whereas, whereas this we can probably get it done in sort of six months. There's lots of new anomalies we've seen 
which we haven't seen before because they've been hidden by, by sort of thick soils and clay. So it's very, very exciting from a geological point of view. We collect, collect all the data, we process it, and we produce a series of coloured contour maps. And it shows us the variations of the different types of rock. Are they highly mag magnetised? Are they lowly magnetised? And we've seen some very interesting features already, even at sort of this, uh, just with the raw data we're getting. We're seeing interesting sort of linear features stretching across the country. And these are kind of dolerite dikes, very magnetised. And they can be seen, they extend from sort of Donegal all the way to Anglesey. While the eye in the sky technology penetrates the landscape from above, there's also a team of scientists on the ground, combing the countryside for soil and water samples. The geochemical survey is a snapshot in time of what's in our soil and streams. Geochemistry is simply the, the, the discipline of studying the chemistry and the geology of our environment. So I'm interested to know how the chemistry of our rock, our soil and our sediments are, are naturally varying across the, the region. Most of that variation is caused quite naturally by the geology of the rocks underneath, so what the rocks are made of and the minerals that they contain. But in addition, we can sometimes see that there's influences by hand, how the land is used and how it's being managed and how man is interacting with it as well. We're collecting samples of stream water and of sediment from the, the stream bed. And we pass that material through a series of nylon sieves um, and we're just collecting about a kilo of, of very fine sediment from, from, that, from that sample. And in addition, we're collecting um, a few bottles of water and these samples are going to be analysed to tell us what the chemical makeup of these waters and sediments are. We're not involved with, um, with any exploration uh, of fracking or of, of any minerals at all. What we're trying to do is to take a, a snapshot, a, have a really good understanding of how different chemical elements are distributed in the environment and to try and understand why they, they are where they are. The TELUS project is not merely an academic exercise. The results of the research will be made available to a wide range of interests and it's hoped the survey will be extended across the rest of the country. We're hoping very much to gain a really good understanding of the chemistry of soil in greater detail than ever, which will assist farmers in looking at things like trace element deficiencies and excesses in soils and helping them to increase their productivity on that basis. We'd very much hope to extend it to the rest of the country. Um, it'll be dependent on finding funding to, funding to do that kind of work. Um, but we'd really hope through this um, cross-border collaboration which we're doing with the Geological Survey of Northern Ireland that we can demonstrate the benefits um, to the area. Um, there's other benefits as well, such as radon assessment, uh, which we know is a, a major public health issue in Ireland at the moment. And then sometimes the unexpected turns up. A rare fossilised shell, just to remind us that this landscape has indeed been changing over millions of years. A fascinating project, the results of which will be useful for years to come. Well, back here at Ordna Krusha, preparations are complete for the arrival of the Taoiseach and the Kenny tomorrow, marking the 85th anniversary of the establishment of the ESB. And let us take this opportunity to congratulate the men and women of the organisation on reaching this milestone. Well, we'll be back on Friday with another Nationwide. Until then, bye bye. On Friday's Nationwide, we celebrate voluntary organisations around the country. In Limerick, Pieta House offers help to those who self-harm or feel suicidal. There's the Sanctuary of Respite Care for MS Services in Dublin and in Multifarnham County Westmeath, a cancer support centre where holistic help and support is on hand.